okay, so here we are. We are working on lab 4.7, which is titled The Solubility of Carbon Dioxide. Um, so far, we've dissolved different solid materials into water um, and tested the concentration, tested the, co uh, the solubility, compared them. So now we're going to um, test the solubility of a gas, which, because of the nature of gases, has some issues. Um, it's not the easiest thing to accomplish because a lot of our measurements have to be done indirectly. Um, so first, let's look at the purpose of our lab. The purpose of the lab is, what is the solubility of carbon dioxide? That's the first part. So we've got to measure that. And then what I want everybody to do is to compare that to the solubility of solids. Um, and part of that got wiped off. So we're going to measure the solubility of carbon dioxide and compare it to that of the solubility of solids. So for those of you that did not do the lab, uh, if you were absent, your hypothesis should be about predicting how the solubility of carbon dioxide would compare to the solubility of solids that we already know. Um, specifically, when we did the lab 4.3, I think it was, com uh, where we compared the solubility of two different solids, Sub substance A had a solubility of 34 grams per cubic or per 100 cubic centimeters, and substance B had a solubility of 96 grams per 100 cubic centimeters. So knowing what we know about gases, I want everyone to predict how the solubility of a gas, carbon dioxide specifically, how that would compare. Um, so that's where your hypothesis should come in. So let's put that aside. Um, now the issue with measuring the solubility of a gas, if we take a look at our formula, let's look at the top part just for now. Solubility has to do with the mass of the dissolved solute. In this case, the solute is carbon dioxide. So we have to figure out the mass of carbon dioxide that actually dissolves in water. The volume of solvent, that part's easy because the solvent's just water. So all we have to do is measure a certain amount of water and write it down. Then we have to dissolve the carbon dioxide into the water and figure out the mass of the carbon dioxide that actually dissolved. So that's where it gets a little tricky. Um, as you guys know, we've dealt with gases before in terms of the mass and the density and things of that nature, and um, measuring those numbers with regards to a gas is not that easy. So this is what we're trying to accomplish at the end. It's always a good idea to have um, the end in sight or you know, knowing what our end goal is so that as we're moving through the lab, we know what we're shooting for. So that's what we're trying to figure out is how much gas will actually dissolve. The other part is we want to make sure it's a saturated solution. Um, so that we can actually measure the true solubility. Solubility is not just how much can dissolve, it's the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a certain solvent. So we have to create a saturated solution of carbon dioxide and water. So we've got to collect the carbon dioxide, dissolve it in water to the point where no more will dissolve, and then measure it and somehow figure out the mass. So that's where we're going with all this. Um, this is kind of what your data table should look like. Volume of solvent, that's the easy part. I'll show you in a second. Then we're going to, well, you know what? We'll come back to the second part so as not to get confused. We'll just go ahead and get started and then we'll refer back to this as we need to. Okay, so one of the first things that you guys had to do was to take, this is the water bottle that we're going to use to collect the carbon dioxide in a minute, but this is also the volume of solvent. So what everyone had to do was to fill this bottle to the top and then measure its volume using a graduated cylinder. I'm not going to do go through all the nitty gritty because I've already kind of done it just to um, make this video a little bit shorter. But fill this to the top and then using 100 increments measure how much this can hold. Um, and what we came up with, and we'll go ahead and write this down for those of you that need data. We have came up with, uh, or I came up with, the bottle can hold 250 cubic centimeters of water. So like I said, our first number is already done. Volume of solvent, which as you can see over here, that's the bottom number in our calculation. Um, so that part's done, 250 cubic centimeters. So then this volume of water gets poured into this blue bucket. This is where we're gonna dissolve the carbon dioxide um, in a little bit once we've collected it. So this volume of water would get measured and then poured into this bucket. I've already done that for you, so you're not going to see me pour it at this time. Um, and then this gets put aside until we're ready to dissolve the carbon dioxide in a little bit. So that's the first thing. 
Then we need to set up the little contraption to actually collect the carbon dioxide. And you guys have seen this before. This is our bucket, um, a second bucket, half full of water. Um, we have set this exact thing up. Uh, this will be the third time. This is the same setup that we use for um, when we heated baking soda and the same setup we used when we did the density of carbon dioxide. So you guys have seen this before. So then this bottle gets filled to the top again. Cover it up so that no air can get in. We're going to invert it into this bucket of water. I did a good job. There's no air bubbles. This one is particularly important not to have any air bubbles because if there's air in there, when we collect the carbon dioxide, then the carbon dioxide sample that we dissolve into the water isn't going to be a pure sample. It's just going to be carbon dioxide mixed with air, and um, that's not the truest form of pure carbon dioxide. So this can't have any air bubbles in it, and I did good. There's no air bubbles. Then we have um, our test tube over here to put the Alka-Seltzer in. So the test tube just has about 10 cubic centimeters of water. We're going to put that here. We've got our fancy delivering tube, delivery tube. So we're going to take two Alka-Seltzer and we're going to put it in the water. Um, we're using two Alka-Seltzer this time to ensure that we create a lot of carbon dioxide because we want this entire bottle to be completely full, not just a portion of it. That's where this is a little different than what we've done before. Um, in the past, we've done um, where we just took a portion of the bottle and you know measured that for volume and mass. This time we're going to fill this entire bottle. So that's one of the reasons we're using a smaller bottle is to ensure that we can fill it entirely. And then we're going to use two whole Alka-Seltzer um, again to make enough carbon dioxide to completely fill the bottle. Now here's one thing that's a little different. We're not putting the delivery tube into the bottle just yet. We're going to let it bubble a little bit once the Alka-Seltzer has been added because again right now this tube has air in it. And if I were to put the tube directly into the bottle right now and then added the Alka-Seltzer the air from the tube is going to get pushed into the bottle. And we don't want air in there, we just want carbon dioxide. So we're going to let, once the carbon dioxide is generated, it's going to move through the tube and it's going to push all of the air out. So we're going to give it three to five seconds of reacting um, so the carbon dioxide can completely push all the air out. Then we'll put the delivery tube into the bottle and fill the bottle with carbon dioxide. So that's how this will work. Um, so I'm going to put the end of this tube in here. These Alka-Seltzer need to be broken in half because they will not fit whole through that test tube. Let me break this one again. Um, the good news with this one is that even if we lose a little bit of it, we're not actually, we're not doing starting and ending mass like we did with the density. So we, if we lose some of the gas along the way, it's no big deal. The end goal for this part of the lab is to just make sure that this bottle is completely full of carbon dioxide. So it's pure carbon dioxide through and through no water, no air, no nothing. So then we can take our carbon dioxide and dissolve it into the water. So again, if we lose some of this mass or we lose some of the gas um, at the beginning, that's okay, it doesn't matter. All we are trying to do is fill this bottle with carbon dioxide. So if we lose some along the way, it's fine. So let's put these in here. We're gonna let it bubble real quick. Okay, it's bubbling quite a bit. Now I'm gonna put this up in here. And the part that you're going to miss out on is the fact that this bottle gets full really, really fast. And it's hard for you to see it because the water is clear, but it's almost done. I'm almost completely done. Um, the way you know you're done, once this bottle is full of carbon dioxide, it's going to start bubbling right out of the bottle, which it's doing right now. Um, once it's overflowing with carbon dioxide, the only place left for it to go is out of the bottle and into the water. And so once it starts to bubble, we can see that. It's bubbling as we speak. So now I'm going to remove the delivery tube and I'm going to put my hand under the mouth of the bottle so that none of it can get out. And ta-da! Can't see it because it's a gas, but this is pure carbon dioxide uh, with nothing else in here at all. So now we can get to the part of actually dissolving the carbon dioxide into a known volume of solvent. And that's the purpose of the whole lab is how much of this gas that fills this bottle is actually going to dissolve into that given amount of solvent. So this is where it gets tricky because I need to move this out of the way, being one person instead of a lab group, without losing any carbon dioxide in this hand right here. Um, here's my bucket of solvent. I've added blue food coloring to it 
so that as it's mixing, it's easier to see what's going on. So I've got my carbon dioxide, and I've got my solvent, and I've got to get this in here without losing any of the gas. Okay. So all of that just to get to this point, because again, this is where we're, we're going to dissolve the carbon dioxide. Ooh. That's where we're going to dissolve the carbon dioxide. And again, that's the purpose of the lab is how soluble is it. So how much of that carbon dioxide is going to dissolve into the water? Okay, there's a couple logistical things you need to know about how this is going to work. Um, this is still making a lot of gas over here. Okay, as I, I probably need to tilt this again a little bit so you can see it. All right, so we know that in order to make a saturated solution, you have to, um, in the past, we've shaken the test tube with the water, with the water and um, the solute. So the solute and solvent, we shake it a lot to get it to dissolve. We've got to do the same thing with this. So what I'm going to do is, I, I like, I need to keep the mouth of the bottle close to the bottom of the container, so that we don't lose carbon dioxide just by letting it get out into the air. What we want to do is force the carbon dioxide to dissolve into the water. And the only way to do that is to mix it so that the water comes in contact with the carbon dioxide and we slosh it around. And as they kind of run into each other, it's going to force the carbon dioxide to dissolve. Now what's going to happen then in the water bottle is that as the carbon dioxide is dissolving, it's going to dissolve into the solvent. So here's the bottle. And the carbon dioxide in the bottle is going to move into the solution that's in the bucket. And as it does that, the solution is going to move up into the bottle. So the key here is paying attention to the water level in the bottle. As the water level rises, that's our sign that the carbon dioxide is dissolving. So as the water gets into the bottle, because right now the only way for the water to get into the bottle is for the carbon dioxide to be moving out. And the only way it can move out, since the mouth is underwater, is for it to dissolve into the water. So as it dissolves and moves into the solution, the solution moves up into the bottle. This is where we have, this is the part, long part of the lab. This part goes on forever because we have to mix it for about 15 minutes pretty vigorously. Um, so what I've done in the interest of time is I've already prepared the solution ahead of time so that you can see what kind of what it looks like at the end. Um, you can already see, I'm going to tilt the camera in a second. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I don't know if you can or not. There's already some, you might not be able to see it, there's already some water that's gotten into the into the um, collection bottle. Can you see that right there? You see how it's sloshing around? Because I've, dissol I've, I've been dissolving it, so that's my sign that it's working, that I'm doing this the right way. The water getting into the bottle as the carbon dioxide dissolves. So we do this for about 15 minutes, and I'm going to switch this out just in the interest of time. Um, after about 15 minutes, this is this is what you should see. You should see that so much water has gotten into the bottle because so much carbon dioxide has actually dissolved into the solution. So after about 15 minutes, what you'll find is that this water level won't rise anymore. That's because this carbon dioxide left in the top just won't dissolve anymore because the solution is saturated. So this solution right here that's in the bottle and in the container together, that whole solution, no more carbon dioxide can dissolve into it. We're done. Done dissolving carbon dioxide. It's totally saturated. And again, we know that because this part up here at the top that's still carbon dioxide, that water level won't move. No more carbon dioxide will dissolve into the solution. So we're done. So this is where we get back to our numbers. Um, and this is the part that measuring it measuring how much dissolved becomes sort of that kind of indirect process. If I, um, let me take this out of here so you can see it a little bit better. Actually, here, let me, I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so now what I did was I just held the mouth of this to the bottom of the container and then flipped it um, so none of this got out. So the fact that this much water got into the bottle means that this exact volume of carbon dioxide dissolved. This much, we know this much dissolved because that's how much water got in there. The carbon dioxide had to dissolve in order to allow the water in. So as it's dissolving, water gets in. A little more dissolves, more water gets in. A little more dissolves, more water gets in. A little more dissolves, more water gets in. You see the process. So as the water is entering the bottle, Carbon dioxide dissolves, water gets in. Carbon dioxide dissolves, water gets in. Carbon dioxide dissolves, water gets in. Until it stops. Until no more carbon dioxide can dissolve. So if I measure how much water 
is in the bottle that got in, that's going to tell me the volume of carbon dioxide that dissolved because the water that got in is equal to the volume of carbon dioxide that dissolves. So then what we do is we take the graduated cylinder and we measure how much water is in here. Lucky for you, I've already done that so that you don't have to sit here and watch me measure. So what we came up with is that 236 milliliters of water is in that bottle. So 236. And I'm going to show you how this works indirectly. Let me scooch this out of the way. If this will move two things in the way. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so what I did here was write down the volume of water in the bottle after mixing. That's exactly this. This, I've already measured, is 236 cubic centimeters. Now, the next one says volume of dissolved carbon dioxide. Remember this, the amount of water that got into the bottle, is equal to the volume of carbon dioxide that dissolved. So these two numbers are the same. 236. Okay, we're halfway there. Um, actually, more than halfway there. Now, now we know the volume of carbon dioxide that dissolved. The thing is, I need to know the mass. Mass of dissolved carbon dioxide, not the volume. You guys already know from chapter 3 that, I'm backwards here, in order for me to figure out the mass, I can look at the volume over here. Where's the volume? There it is. I can take the volume of carbon dioxide, multiply it times the density of carbon dioxide to get the mass. The density of carbon dioxide, I don't know if you can see it that well, is 0 0.0018 grams per cubic centimeter. So basically I'm going to do 236 volume times density, 0 0.0018, and that's going to tell me the volume of carbon dioxide that's in here, it's going to tell me how much it weighs, what its mass is. Because remember, that's, how, that's what solubility is, is what's the mass of carbon dioxide that dissolved. So we're basically taking the volume and converting it over to mass using density. So we're going to do 236 times 0 0.0018. So let's do that. 236 times 0 0.0018 is 0 0.42, 0 0.425 we'll say. So the mass is equal to 0 0.425 grams, which seems very light, which it is. If you remember, so here we are down here. 0.425 grams. So the amount of carbon dioxide that dissolved is represented by this blue water. The mass of that amount of carbon dioxide is less than half a gram, which makes sense. Gases are really light. We've done this before. Remember the density. If you look at the density, 0 0.0018 grams per cubic centimeter, every little one cubic centimeter of carbon dioxide has a mass of 0 0.0018 grams. Carbon dioxide, as most gases, is very, very light. So that makes sense that this much, represented by the blue, this much carbon dioxide, is very, it has very little mass to it. Makes sense, because like I said, gases are light. So now what we want to do is take the 0.425 grams, see that's the mass of dissolved solid, and divide it into the volume of solvent, which is 250. Remember, this bucket had 250 cubic centimeters of water. That's my solvent, because then I took the carbon dioxide and I dissolved it into that 250 cubic centimeters of water. So volume of solvent is 250, mass of dissolved carbon dioxide is 0.425. So let's do that. So 0.425 divided by 250. That gives me 0.0017 grams per cubic centimeter. Now the last step is to multiply that by 100. And if you remember, we had to change. We can't use grams per cubic centimeter for, so, uh, for solubility because grams per cubic centimeter is the unit for density. So we take our answer and we multiply the whole thing times 100. And what that gives us is grams per 100 cubic centimeters. So what we should find is that the solubility of carbon dioxide is, in fact, 0.17 grams, where are you? there you go, at the very end there, if you can read my writing, 0.17 grams per 100 cubic centimeters. Okay, so what that tells me is that if I took 100 cubic centimeters of water, which is like 100 milliliters, right, here it is right here, 100 milliliters. If I took this much water and I dissolved carbon dioxide into it until it was completely saturated, 
I would find that 0.17 grams of carbon dioxide will saturate a solution of 100 cubic centimeters of water. Or another way of saying that is 0.17 grams of carbon dioxide will completely dissolve in 100 cubic centimeters of water, but no more. Remember, solubility is the concentration of a saturated solution. So it means that's the total mass of solute that can completely dissolve in a certain amount of solvent and not a little bit more, not even a 0 0.01 grams more can go into it. So the solubility of carbon dioxide is 0.17 grams per 100 cubic centimeters. Again, that means 0.17 grams of carbon dioxide will completely dissolve in 100 cubic centimeters of water. So that's our solubility of carbon dioxide. And if you think back to the solubility of solids that we looked at, we said solid A, back in lab 4.3, had a solubility of 34 grams per 100 cubic centimeters. So if you kind of compare that 34 grams per 100 versus 0.17 grams per 100, clearly gases are much less soluble, which makes sense. If you look at the formula, the formula is the mass of dissolved solute. And gases by nature are very, very light. Their mass is always going to be small. Even if we have a very, very large amount of gas, the mass itself is going to be really small because gases are really light. So the solubility of carbon dioxide makes sense. It's going to be very light, only 0.17 grams per 100 cubic centimeters. So um, I, today we're in class. Today is Monday when I'm recording this. We're going to do the post-lab discussion for this lab. So I'll do the pen cast um, today at some point and post that for you guys so we can go through the blue dots um, and make sure we get what we need to get out of this. But hopefully that was thorough enough and understandable so that if you missed it, hopefully that, uh, that helps out a bit. All right. See you in class.